Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to show you what the equations look like for the moment of inertia of a triangle. Now, we could have the triangle in such a way where the center mass is right on the axis, which we're trying to find the moment of inertia relative to, like in this case, the x-axis, or we can have the base right on top of the axis. So what do the equations look like? Well, in this case, of course, again, we have a little symbol here indicating that it's the moment of inertia relative to an axis, the x-axis, which goes right through the center mass of the triangle, and it's equal to 1 over 36 times the base times the height cubed. Now, realizing that the area of a rectangle is equal to 1 half the base times the height, we can factor that out. So this is equal to 1 over 18 times 1 half the base times the height. And what we have left here is height squared. And then you can see if we replace this with the area of the, of the triangle, this becomes 1 18th the area times the height squared. Now, if the base is on top of the x-axis, the axis to which we're trying to find the moment of inertia to, relative to, I should say, then we can see that this is going to be equal to 1 12th the base times the height cubed. Again, realizing that the area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height, this can be written as 1 over 6 times 1 half the base times the height times h squared, and this therefore is equal to 1 sixth the area of the triangle times h squared. Now, let's do something to see if that makes sense. Let's turn this into a rectangle. So if we go ahead and make this into a rectangle, like that, notice that the rectangle would have width equals to the base of the triangle, and the height would be the same as the height of the triangle. Then remember from the previous video, what was the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis? Well, it turns out that the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis for the rectangle was going to be equal to one-third the area times the width. Oh, I shouldn't say the area times the width. I should say the width times the height. Width times the height times the height squared. And of course, the width times the height is the area, so it's equal to one-third the area of the rectangle times h squared. So it's just interesting to note that the moment of inertia of the rectangle is simply twice the moment of inertia of the triangle. And that, again, shows you something about the distribution of the area relative to that axis of rotation. And that's how it's done.